And then the last way to combat overthinking is to objectify, create a subject object relationship with all of the overthinking. What I will do is if I'm finding it hard to go to bed at night because I'm thinking about something uh, and I can't put it down, or maybe I wake up at 4 a.m. and I've got thoughts that I typically don't have during the day, I'll have a journal next to my bed and I'll jot these things down. You might be thinking, well, and I have thought in the past, like I don't wanna give this any more energy by suddenly bringing it into reality and having it uh, be on paper now. It feels like I'm just gonna entrench it more. But I have found that it does quite the opposite. It actually allows me to see what it is that I have been having in my head as an internal experience, to move it to external, and then for me to consume and digest it and reorganize it back into my mind in a different way. A couple different ways that you can journal about this are number one, just to free write. So rather than editing and trying to come up with cohesive sentences or thoughts, quite literally write down anything that's coming into your mind about this overthinking, this topic you're overthinking about. Another way to do this is actually write about yourself in the third person. For me, what I would say then, I'd say, you know, Clayton is in this situation currently and he's thinking this and he's feeling this. And these are some of the things that he's worried about. These are some possible ways that he might want to show up. And just switching my language and creating that objective viewpoint where I'm looking at myself as a character in the play can pull me out of that experience and give me more flexibility to begin to see the situation that I'm in from a, a different lens. And then lastly, another way uh, is to notice the overthinking and to trust that it's actually just a part of you that's being overactive. It's just one aspect of your personality or persona that is on high alert and that has a concern. How you can have a conversation with it is one in your head, out loud actually talking to it uh, or journaling about it. It might be that I take a moment and I write down the things that it's saying and then I have a conversation with that and I say, well, what is it that you want? What does this part want for me? Most often what it's wanting is safety. Just establishing communication with that part allows me to develop a better relationship with it. It has that part feel heard, as wild as that might sound, and for it to then quiet and uh, for me to be able to move into uh, more clear thinking because that part has felt like it had a voice, that I'm listening to it, and for it to maybe turn the volume down at that point.